Hey guys, so there's been so much request for a video about tissues, so I thought I would finally do it now. Let's get right to it. So we'll start right with tissues. Which, as you know, are groups or clusters of cells. When you have a group of cells, you can call it a tissue. And that being said, a group of tissues would make an organ, a group of organs would make an organ system, and many organ systems, in a human it would be 11, would make an organism. So those are structural levels of organization. Moving back to tissues, we have four categories of tissues. So I'll write out the four categories and then we'll elaborate on each one. The first type of tissue that we'll look at is neural tissue. The second type of tissue that we'll look at is muscle tissue. Connective tissue. And epithelial tissue. There are two types of neural tissue, and they are neurons and neuroglia. Neurons, neuroglia. The role of neurons is to carry important information up to your brain and from your brain back to your body. For example, if I were to touch something extremely hot, the neurons would carry that, oh my gosh, it's hot, information all the way to my brain, and my brain would send the appropriate signal. So instead of keeping my hand here on this burning hot plate, my brain will tell my hand, my muscles to flinch, and I will immediately remove my hand from the hot plate. So you can think of neurons as the main player. If neurons are the ones carrying all the information, relaying it back and forth, what do the neuroglia do? The neuroglia are supporting cells. The glia are responsible for providing nutrients, providing food, insulation, removal of waste, and so many other functions. That's pretty much it for neural tissue, so moving right along, let's talk a little bit about connective tissue. Within connective tissue, we have four types. And let's go into the four types and then elaborate on each one. The first type of connective tissue, one that people so often forget about, is blood. The next type that we'll talk about is bone. Next, we have fibrous connective tissue. And finally, we have cartilage. Within fibrous connective tissue, we have three types. The three types are loose, dense, and reticular. In cartilage, we also have three types, and the three types are hyaline, elastic, and fibrocartilage. Let's go through connective tissue one more time. We started with connective tissue, in which there are four types, blood, bone, fibrous, and cartilage. Within cartilage, there were three types, elastic, hyaline, and fibrocartilage. Fibrous connective tissue also had three types, and they were loose, dense, and reticular. In epithelial tissue, there are many more. There's actually seven types, but the easiest way to break it down is to first break it down according to the number of layers. In simple epithelial tissue, we have one layer of cells simply one layer. In stratified, the word stratified comes from the word strata, which means layers. You can think of the stratosphere, which is a layer in the atmosphere. Simple means one layer, and stratified means there are many, many, many cell layers. You can think of it as one page of a book, and then many, many pages on top of each other of a book. In simple, we can further break it down into three subcategories. The three subcategories are dependent on their shape, and the three subcategories are squamous, cuboidal, and columnar. In terms of stratified, 
We can also further break it down into three subcategories, also dependent on their shape. Again, we are going to go with squamous, cuboidal, and columnar. Let's talk a little bit about the six types, and I'll actually draw a picture for each one. Note that we started with simple and stratified, which tells us the number of cell layers. So all three of these are going to have one layer of cells. First of all, squamous. I think of squamous like the word scales, and scales on a fish are very, very flat. So squamous means flat. Simple, one layer, squamous, flat. Simple cuboidal means that the cells are cube-shaped, and again, one cell layer thick. These red spots are nuclei. Simple columnar, again, means that it is one cell layer thick, but this time, they are long and tall, like columns. On the stratified side, all three of these will have many layers, but wait. Note that with this one, I wrote pseudo-stratified columnar. That's the key here. Pseudo means false. It's not truly stratified. It only looks like it's stratified, but really it's just one cell layer thick. So be careful for this one, which looks a little like this. Note that it looks like it's many cell layers thick, but really it is just one layer of cells, making it a false layered columnar, pseudo-stratified columnar. With stratified cuboidal and stratified squamous, they really are many cell layers thick. So you can draw this one as many layers of cubes on top of each other with nuclei. And stratified squamous would be many layers of flat cells. Again, simple and stratified tell you the number of layers. Squamous, cuboidal, and columnar tell you the shape of the cell. It's also important to note that these are six types of epithelial tissue, but there's one more. The last one is called transitional. Transitional epithelial tissue is very unique because it is found in very few places in the body, but you will find some within the bladder, the urethra, and the ureters. Transitional epithelial tissue is special because it looks like stratified cuboidal. I'll draw it in to look like stratified cuboidal. The special thing that transitional epithelial cells can do is they can expand. Like in the bladder, it would need to expand so the walls get very thin and be able to return to their original shape where the cells become thicker again. Transitional epithelial tissue can stretch, expand, and return to its original shape and size. It looks like stratified cuboidal. That's it for epithelial tissue. We finished all seven, and I hope this was easier to sort of visualize, breaking it down a little bit. And let's move on to muscles. In muscles, we have three types. The three types are smooth, skeletal, and cardiac. I'll write them down and then we'll talk about them a little bit more. Most importantly, we have to note where we can find all of these. Smooth muscle, I can find only in the walls of hollow organs. For example, I can find smooth muscle inside my stomach, in my small intestine, and also lining the walls of my blood vessels. On the other hand, skeletal muscles can be found virtually anywhere else on your body. For example, my biceps, my deltoid, quadriceps, muscles in my calf, my, the muscles that help me smile, all of these are skeletal muscles. Most of the time, you'll find skeletal muscles connected to bone. Smooth muscles are deep within hollow organs. Skeletal muscles are more superficial and connected to bone. Cardiac muscle can only be found in one place, and that one place is inside the heart. You cannot find cardiac tissue anywhere else, only inside the heart. Let's talk a little bit about another thing that I'd like to highlight, which is whether or not it's voluntary or involuntary. Voluntary means that you have control over it, 
and involuntary means you have no control over it. Skeletal muscles, such as in my hands, in my arms, in my legs, my feet, these are all voluntary. I can tell myself that I want to lift my arms up, I can tell myself that I want to flex. All of these are voluntary actions that my brain is telling my muscles via the neurons. Smooth muscles, on the other hand, within my blood vessels, in my small intestine, cannot be controlled. These are involuntary. And cardiac muscle, I can't tell my heart to beat faster. I cannot slow my heart rate to 20 beats per minute. This is also involuntary. To repeat, skeletal muscle is voluntary, and the other two, cardiac and smooth muscle, are involuntary which means that they can contract and relax without any of my conscious thought. Let's do a full review of all the tissues. We have neural, muscle, connective, and epithelial. Within neural, we have two types. They are the neuroglia, the supporting cells, and the neurons, which are the main cells that carry the message. Within connective tissue, we have four types. We talked about blood, bone, cartilage, and fibrous. Within these, there were further subdivisions. And then we talked about epithelial tissue. In epithelial tissue, we divided it into simple and stratified, based on the number of layers, and then we further broke it down to examine their shape. So after we separated them based on layers, we examined their shape. Was it squamous flat? Was it cuboidal like a cube? Or was it tall and thin like a column? The seventh epithelial tissue was transitional, which looked like stratified cuboidal, but it could stretch. Finally, we talked about the three types of muscle tissue. We talked about smooth, skeletal, and cardiac muscle, all of which are found in different parts of our bodies, and some are voluntary, others involuntary. And that's pretty much it for tissues. I know it was a lot, but I hope that was really helpful. Thanks, guys.